All right, what we're going to do is a modified version of the lab on page 147 and 148 in your lab book. We are going to isolate DNA from a strawberry. So all cells have DNA, well, pretty much anyway, and strawberries are a good choice to get the DNA out of for a couple of reasons. First of all, they are octoploid. Most strawberries that you buy at the store have eight sets of chromosomes. You and I, of course, are diploid. In addition, they also have enzymes which break down their cell wall, which makes it a little easier to get at the um, DNA that's inside. So you need a strawberry, take off the sepals, the little green uh, leaf-like structures. You will need to make some tissue buffer. I added a half a cup of water, a quarter teaspoon of salt, just regular table salt, and one and a quarter teaspoons of dish soap. You don't have to get yours at Costco. So mix that up and that is your tissue buffer. You will also need a funnel, something to catch the contents as it goes through the funnel, and in my case I have cheesecloth. If you don't have cheesecloth you can use a uh, stocking, nylon stocking, a little piece of that from an old stocking, something to stretch over the top of a funnel. Uh, you might also try a coffee filter. I haven't tried that but it probably will work as well. You also need ice cold isopropyl alcohol, or rubbing alcohol as it's sometimes called. It has to be really cold, so put this in the freezer for a good half hour, maybe longer, even overnight would be good, uh, and keep it on ice until you're ready to use it. So, what we were going to do is cut up the strawberry to make it easier to get the cells um, broken up. So I'm going to help myself by slicing the strawberry into a lot of different pieces and then putting it into the baggie. Once I have it in there, I'm going to start to smush it up. The more we smush, the more cells we're going to be able to get the DNA out of. So the more time you spend smushing, the better off you will be. Okay, so I've got my strawberry in the baggie. Just close it up and then just smush up those pieces best you can. So you want kind of a, a gooey mess, if you will. Try not to do it so much that you break the baggie, though. All right, while I'm doing this, let me tell you about the contents of the tissue buffer. The tissue buffer had um, dish soap in it. The dish soap, as most detergents will, uh, disrupts membranes. So the cell's membrane will break down, and so will the nuclear uh, membrane. So the DNA, which is inside, will be easier to get to. If you don't break open those cells, you're not going to be able to get the DNA out. So that's why it's important to smush the cells as much as possible so that the uh, soap in the um, tissue buffer will be able to uh, get to each and every cell. If you've got a big chunk of strawberry, the tissue buffer is not going to get to the middle of that chunk. So do a pretty good job of smushing it up. All right, once I've got that smushed up, now I can add my tissue buffer. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of the tissue buffer to my smushed up strawberry mixture. One. Two. Okay, so zip it back up again. And now you're going to smush it even more. So the soap that's in that tissue buffer is going to disrupt the membranes. That's going to break open the cells so you can get at the DNA. The salt, it's just regular table salt, uh, is going to disrupt the proteins. So that's going to um, bind with the proteins, kind of get rid of those, and the sodium ions that are in the salt will help to bind to the DNA to stabilize it, because DNA has lots of negative charges. So do a pretty good job of smushing up the strawberry with your tissue buffer. Let that soap get into each of those cells. Make sure it's getting into all of them sure you don't have too many big pieces left. Okay, So you should have kind of a, a smushy mess. Alright, so now what you want to do is take your filter, in my case it's cheesecloth, and put it inside the funnel and just pour the tissue buffer and strawberry mixture into that and we're going to catch what comes out. So DNA is soluble in an aqueous solution, a solution that has water. So we can't see it because it's dissolved. But once the DNA gets put into a really cold alcohol solution, the DNA is no longer soluble, so it will precipitate out of solution. 
and then we'll be able to capture it. So you just need to filter, I don't know, a little bit, a teaspoon or so would be enough actually. Uh, and if you need to, you can help coax it by pressing with the back of a spoon to get a little bit more of that juice out. Okay? So that's pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to take another container so you can see better. And I'm just going to measure out about a teaspoon of this. Okay? That was just a hair shy of a teaspoon, which should be plenty. So I'm going to put that in my cup, and again, I can't see the DNA because it's dissolved. But if I add two to two and a half volumes of the ice cold alcohol, then the DNA should precipitate out of solution. So since I had one teaspoon of the strawberry, I'm going to add two and a half of the alcohol. I'll just eyeball that last half, it doesn't have to be too precise. Alright, so now the DNA is actually visible as a little white strand, a little bubbly sort of mixture in there. So if I take something like this skewer and put it in there, if I twist the skewer over and over in the same direction, DNA is that really long piece of spaghetti, right? It's really long double helix, and so the DNA will wrap around that skewer. If DNA were elbow macaroni, then it wouldn't be able to do that. So I wrap the DNA around that skewer, and there it is. I don't know if you can see it close enough, uh, but it looks just kind of like a snot wad. So this is the great loogie of life. This is probably the most important molecule in all of biology. So that is how you isolate DNA from a strawberry.